Hello everyone. I'm sitting here waiting for um, my Ableton Live project containing Steel From The Rich given to myself to load up. I got some kind of a, I don't know the word in English, but I have a pretty severe lung infection right now. If I breathe out, that's what it sounds like lovely for gtfo i have recorded a lot of like monster sounds for gtfo now but i'm i'm pretty sick uh is what i'm what i want to say so my voice is going to sound a little bit different so let's let's get into it the song kicks off with guitars and synthesizers just to set the tone immediately like this is not a pure rock song it has some synthesizers as well together with the uh, the guitars then of course come the drums two kicks played by battery four here it's this one together with this one which is more room but not enough room because i use this contact instrument here to play this sample as well you can see I turned the attack knob up there, which takes away the attack. So that's how the kick should have sounded, but I've taken it away because I'm relying on this sample to provide the attack or the transient. So together they sound like this. And that's an adequate kick in my book. There are also some effects, like white noise. Reverse symbol. Stuff like that. It's a sort of an EDM thing to have those sounds, you know. I think it adds a lot of like tension and release elements to the music, regardless of the genre. Then comes the snares this very synthy snare played by battery and then there's this one by addictive drums much more room and then this is very like machine gun effect and this sort of adds a little bit more live feel to it but then there's this sample right here which is actually one of those like build up white noise samples if you expand it it sounds like this And I cut away everything but the very end. And I play that right before every snare, pretty much, in the entire song. You see? Right here. This is where the snare hits. Right before. Right before. And you see this all the way through the entire song, pretty much. What it sounds like on its own is horrible. As you can hear, I've added some uh, reverb to it as well to make it blend more, but it just adds a little bit of flam effect to the snare. It makes the attack more imprecise. Uh, I don't know why that would be something you want to have, but uh, apparently I did. I thought it uh, added a little bit of character somehow to the drums. Makes it more, I don't know what. So the drums soloed with both kick and snare sound like If I take away that little anticipation sound, it sounds like. I don't know, it's maybe it's like it's too straight, too like run of the mill. This just adds a little bit something that this just, you know, annoying, a little bit off, you know. In the mix with everything else, it just, I don't know, adds something. Then we have the guitars. Of course, I cheat a lot. I just play the guitar riff like once or twice, and then I loop it. Guitar rig is the go-to uh, effect. This is the lead guitar in the beginning, uh, played right in the center, or almost in the center. And then you can see this automation right here. I move it over further to the right, and then I add this guitar to the left, which has a different tone. And then together, they have this sort of rich character with a lot of stereo. 
So it goes from two. Yeah, and then of course the bass, which is entirely synthesized. First the sub bass. Just a Nexus preset called Basic Sign, which is exactly what it is. Just to, to, to get the sub bass. And then for the greediness of the bass, I have this preset. Together, they have both the greediness and the sub. Which is nice. So that's pretty much the bass through the entire song. It just plays, it has that dum da dum da dum to reinforce that triplet rhythm in the song. And even when it changes chord. The bass is very, for lack of a better word, basic, I guess. Uh, it's all synthesized. And that's how I wanted the song to be, sort of a mix. You know, gritty, dirty guitars, but at the same time, a lot of synthesizers. Even the guitars themselves are actually doubled by a synthesizer. So the guitars have that sort of mid-range grittiness in them. But then the synthesizers here sort of add some, I don't know, a buzzy sort of top end. Here, if I take the synthesizers away, and then if I add them back in. So they really have a sort of sharp sharpness to them. And I think they add a lot and help the riff so that the riff is actually represented in more frequencies. It's also in the top frequencies. As soon as you take away the synthesizers, it just feels like something's missing. Then comes the vocals. Let's listen to the vocals. Call me crazy, call me insane. The gesture and the king is one and the same. Insane. It's a lot in the slide, you know, down to the to the note. I like that. Very much inspired by one of my absolute favorite rock vocalists, Scott Wyland. Had a lot of those, you know, meh. Alice in Chains, of course with Lane Staley, lots of that feverish sort of coming down on the note like that. I like that a lot. So this is very much inspired by that sort of grungy melodies that I love. We'll have you rattle your brain. We'll have you rattle your brain. This looks like this green portion here is one take. Bright blue take is one blue. Here is a third pink portion here is one. But Actually, if you pull them out like this, you can see that it's actually exactly the same take, everything. I don't know why it's all different colors. I recorded this so long ago, but you can definitely tell that I've, I've fixed some uh, timing issues right here. Right there, you can see I've fixed something that wasn't really in line with the rhythm of the song. Then you have the backing vocals, the lead vocals should always lie on a bed of other vocals that sort of support the, the lead vocals. First off, there's this one. Call me crazy, call me insane. Which has some stereo effect, no pitch correction on this vocals, and it's intentionally because I want it to be a little bit off-key. If they're off-key, it actually sounds better. It sounds more like a chorus, it sounds more like a group of people, uh, and it's not supposed to be like precisely on the note. So right there, I have a double of the uh, lead vocals, which is exactly the same melody, just a different take, a different distortion effect, and some stereo on it. And then there's this one. Call me crazy, call me insane. Which is a, a, an octave below the lead vocals. And then there's this one, which is yet another octave below. Call me crazy, call me insane. All of these vocals together the vocals and the backing vocals sound like this. Call me crazy, call me insane. The gesture and the king is one and the same. And if you take away the backing vocals. Call me crazy, call me insane. You see how much is missing. Of course, there's power in vocals when they're sung high up there. Lots of energy, but something goes missing when it's all, you know, the high notes. So that's why the backing vocals contain this lower keys as well. The question of... Really runs this freak show. 
And then uh, halfway through the uh, verse, this riff comes in. Obviously mimicking the bass. Again, it's guitar rig. I really like that tone, really gritty and dirty. So let's listen to the entire guitar package here. Then comes You can control me Upper Harmony You can control me You might not think about it when you listen to the entire song, but it adds something. You can control me and I can't even control myself. Then comes the hook. Still find the rich give to myself. Still find the rich give to myself. Obviously lots of aggressive compression, distortion even on the vocals here. The Devilock Deluxe on both of those tracks. Then we come back to the verse. And here we can highlight something that we haven't actually soloed before. It's been going on through the entire song. It sounds like this. So this is the first time in the song you actually sort of hear this almost all on its own. It's just the vocals, the kick drum, and this. I stack the decks and I'm rigging the rays. I take a shot. This is actually two synthesizers and they have guitar distortion on them. So it's not guitars but it sounds a little bit like the guitars. If we take away the guitar distortion, it sounds like this. But with the guitar distortion, it sounds almost like guitars. Pretty cool. And it really adds to the triplet rhythm of the song. Like The idea is to have sort of a rhythm guitar feel to it, but it's all synthesizer sounds. I stack the decks and I'm rigging the rays. I take a shortcut to the end of the maze Hello. And then that part ends in the half tempo I can't even control my Then there's this little drum fill here It's only in this part of the song actually What is this drum kit ensemble from 8DO? Anyway, this sounds Great. So it's right before the solo. Okay, so I felt like the song needed to be longer. I figured it couldn't just be, you know, intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and then end. I needed something more. So I added the solo. Soloing isn't really my thing. So I actually turned to Fiverr.com and thought that I could find a guitarist there. My first idea was to have a slide guitar solo. So I turned to a great slide guitar player on Fiverr, paid him, or the money was paid to an escrow service and held there until he had completed the, the job. I sent him the track and I wanted something squealy and dirty and like really gnarly and, and uh, something really filthy. He, he was like, mm, this isn't really what I usually do, but it sounds cool. Let me try something out, and then he sent me this. I don't know if you can tell, but he's playing in major key, and the entire song is in minor key. So he completely misunderstood the entire like feeling of the song. He obviously 
couldn't wrap his head around whatever this song was. I, I was like, could you try something different? And um, he gave it 10 days or something like that. And then he just said he wouldn't take the money and he felt like he couldn't do a good enough job, which I completely respect. But I wanted to release the song for my 40th birthday on the 1st of December. So I had wasted some time waiting for this guy to complete the solo. I turned to someone else on Fiverr, a guitarist that said that he could play any style, you know, rock and roll and metal and whatnot. At this point, I had given up on the slide guitar concept. And I told him, I want something bluesy and, you know, 70s rock sort of feel. And I specifically said no metal. And this is what he sent me. Okay, what is that? If that's not metal, I don't know what is. <clears throat> anyway, I hadn't paid this guy to send me several, you know, revisions, but I, I just told him, hey man, I, I told you no metal, and this is obviously metal. He never wrote me anything, he just sent me three new takes, and this is one of the solos. <laughs> Yeah, that's more like wailing and it has more of that character that I wanted in terms of the notes. But the tone is still very much metal. He wasn't that flexible as a guitarist. And uh, at that point I gave up on Fiverr and decided to play the solo myself. I'm not that good a guitarist really, as previously mentioned. But what you do then, you cheat. You cheat. So this is the guitar solo that I came up with. I'm not a good guitarist, but I know what I want. So I just fooled around with the guitar until I found these notes and then this part I played separately and then I played this separately and I then played. So I cheated a lot to make this solo work and it's not a very, you know, advanced solo. Um, it's just that I'm a very mediocre solo guitarist. It sounds like this. <laughs> That's the guitar solo that I cheated. Uh, I even actually bent this note more with the, the help of this plugin right here. You can bend it more. So the bend happens with the help of this plugin right here. You can't control me. So here comes the breakdown, which is also something new. All the other vocals were recorded back in like 2015 or whenever the song was initially written, but this was recorded in 2019. You know, the, the solo and the breakdown here is mostly to just give the song more of an interesting arrangement. Some subtle melody changes, of course, to just create a little bit more interest there. There's a, a, a harmony to this part. I can't even control myself. Just to create that sort of feverish feeling to it. I like that. Then there's this octave below sort of. You can control me. Just to, to add some bottom to all of it. And then there's this synthesizer that's introduced as well. Together with a bass. The build up of the vocals there, where I go from like an octave below, building up like that, going up, is very much inspired by the breakdown and build up in Exploder by Audio Slave. Can't even control myself. That's an echo and reverb added to that vocal right there. Anyway, there's some backing vocals as well. There's a harmony right there. Very ugly distortion on that one. But it works. Somehow it works in the mix.
Uh, so yeah, I don't even know if I can hit this note. Obviously, I can't do it now when I have this <coughs> lung infection. <coughs> 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 And I'll sound like this when I breathe out. But uh, yeah, even on my best days, I think I'd have a hard time hitting this note. So this is most likely solved in Melodyne. You know, you cheat, you cheat. That's a B, that's a hard note for me to hit. There's another drum sound here just for the end of the um, build up here. Addictive. It's just for this part of the song, actually. You can see that's unused. And then just for the build up here, I wanted a thrashier, roomier drum fill sound. Because all of the other drum fills in the entire song, it's just a couple of extra snare hits, like. Like that, but this I wanted more like it can easily become sort of like a machine gun effect on the drums if you don't use proper drum samples. So then comes the very last chorus where this gets repeated. Still find the rich give to myself. What's added on top of everything here to, to give that last chorus even more like intensity than any chorus before it is that this synthesizer is playing this part. Moving between the left and right speaker like that, creating a lot of movement. And then there's this wailing guitar also. comes this horrible squealy screaming from the top of my lungs sort of almost like a harmony I, I use a guitar distortion on the vocals here just you know to, to make it gritty Still find the rich give to myself. and that's really it and I can add that whoever wants to make a remix of this song, they should purchase the Bandcamp release of the song and then they'll get some remix material. A link is in the description of the video. Thank you for tuning in and uh, I'm gonna let my lungs say goodbye to you. Have a good one. Happy New Year. <laughs>